I'd like to take a brief moment to ask our panelists for their key takeaways or their final thoughts from today. Eric, we heard from you first. Perhaps you want to lead us off with a few of your final thoughts. Sure. I mean, I guess I would say that if, if your business includes any low price securities transactions, you should make sure that your AML procedures and particularly your suspicious activity uh, monitoring, investigating and, and reporting procedures specifically address uh, LPS activity. Uh, and in, in developing those procedures or enhancing them, if, if you already do have them, you, you'd be well advised to provide for more robust uh, monitoring and investigative methods than might be used for other lines of business that, are, that perhaps involve less AML risk. And, and, and finally, I would say regardless of business line, um, it, it's important that your AML compliance uh, personnel communicate with your other compliance personnel um, and, and also that, that relying exclusively on third parties for aspects of one's AML program may not insulate the firm from being charged where, where those third parties don't live up to the regulator's expectations for AML compliance. We then went to yourself. Uh, perhaps you want to give us a few of your key takeaways, Stella. Sure. Um, so some of the takeaways, you know, we, I talked a little bit about this and my and my co-panelists did as well, is understanding who your customer base is and, you know, making sure that you're teaching folks that are that are on the front line what to look for and how to address things that might be a little bit different. Uh, and also making sure you're changing the, with the environment as your business grows or changes, but also the environment that your business operates in as that changes and, and, and grows, you should be addressing those within your program, your policies, procedures, uh, and any other um, systems that might help address some of those changes for, for each of you. Finally, we heard from James. James, do you want to close us out with a few of your key takeaways? Sure, thank you. In, in addition, I would just say in addition to knowing who your customer is, it's important that you know who you are as a financial firm. And so I just strongly uh, suggest the use of risk assessments and, and using them to be brutally honest, understanding uh, who you are, who your staff is, what your software is, what your capabilities are vis-a-vis -vis the risks associated with offering services uh, to certain customers. It's not, there's no shame in saying we can't do this one. This guy is way ahead of us or this, uh, this woman is way ahead of us. It's much better to be able to say these are the customers we can serve based on uh, our infrastructure, our resources, and our capabilities. But high risk doesn't mean uh, that you can't do it. You just have to be able to do it well. Thank you.